Good morning, brethren. Today, I'd just like to encourage you to return to the old paths of seeking the Lord, just like the Word of God has said. It's too easy to go and to get carried away with every new thing that comes along. I fear that over time, especially over the centuries, it's a very slow process, the church has found a way to live in the world when the real church of Christ has no place in the world. And what we've seen basically is that the people of God, I, I shouldn't say that, the enemy is deceiving the people of God into getting along with the world, into compromising faith, into compromising their belief in the Bible and in certain parts. I'm not accusing, per se, you know, all of the people of God, but those people, some of those people over time had to make compromises, and it's not a good thing. As we look toward the church today, the church today leans toward prosperity. It's a prosperity type of gospel that has made tremendous headway in the U.S. and in African countries, as I know. You know, we just, we just returned from Africa. And they're just hoping, so the church is just kind of hoping that things will get easier over time. If we live for Christ, you know, we will have uh, plenty of goods. We will have good health. People will love us etc., etc. This has never been the testimony for God's people throughout the history of the Bible. It doesn't tell us that that will happen even now at the end, but instead our sufferings will match those of our beloved Savior. Remember that Jesus said that if anyone would come after him, he should deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow after him. And so I just want you to consider over, over time how things have gone downhill, let's say. There's a saying that says, a person can't see the forest through the trees. I myself have been one that has more seen the forest than the trees, which is not good either. You need a balance of the two because you tend to neglect individuals if you're doing so. But nonetheless, if I just look back into the 1800s, we see the rise of Mormonism. The Mormon church was officially established in 1830. We see that the Seventh-day Adventist church was established in 1863. And the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, were established in 1872. These three have something in common, and that is they were putting away, meddling with the doctrine of hell. Now, when it came to the Mormon church, they kind of moderated hell a bit. They didn't fully reject it, but they have two, two types of hell. One is permanent and one is temporary. Uh, the temporary is one more like, uh, you know, you can, you can get out of hell. You'll be given a chance uh, to repent even after you're dead, which, of course, is unscriptural. But I'm just saying they didn't like the doctrine of hell. And if you're looking to Seventh-day Adventists and Jehovah's Witnesses, they reject hell. They don't take it at all. So you see, they don't really like that much at all. You're, you're starting to veer from the harsher things of biblical Christianity. And when you look at the pre-tribulation rapture, oh, back to that subject again. But this was actually brought about in 1833 by an English preacher named Darby. I have it here, John Nelson Darby. He's actually considered to be the founder of the Plymouth Brethren Church. And he believed in a pre-tribulation rapture in which Jesus comes and rescues the church. Then there's the seven-year tribulation, and then the Lord actually returns Uh I'm going to have a link in the description. Please check out the description below to a blog that I have written. This is totally, this, is, this isn't this is right. I mean, you can accept it as my opinion, but just check out the scriptures that I have listed with the link to the blog that I'll have in the, in the description below. But you can see the nature of this pre-tribulation rapture also was that Christians aren't going to have to be here and suffer through the time of Antichrist. Again, it was a type of rejection of suffering. And then on top of this, in 1871 to 1881, we had the Bible revision, where again, here, here we're questioning the Bible, we're putting it away, we're changing the words. And one of the great formats of this translation, when they had the revised come out, uh, they use this great term called dynamic equivalence. We'll interpret, we encourage dynamic equivalence, which just means put it in your own words. Whatever you think it means, that's what you say. And that's not at all how the Bible should be. It should be, as the, as the King James translators had it, close to literal, but with a bent to understanding, so that people can understand the meaning of the passage. 
not necessarily just putting everything in your own words, which has led to hundreds of Bible, over, Bible versions over the years. So you can see that in the 1800s, there was this bent going away from the hardcore of the Word of God. But the Bible is encouraging us. I just picked this passage out from Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 13 through 17. Please take time to read it. I'll just read uh, verse 16 at this time. Of course, no, make that 13 and 16. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone deals falsely. In verse 16, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. I pray that you would choose to walk therein today. May God bless you.